So on small teams, big impacts, I want to study people who are having a huge impact on the world. And Ruslan Kogan and I met each other at uh, the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. He's one of the, he is the biggest online consumer electronics retailer in Australia. And we're going to hear what's going on in his market and how he's going to glo glo globally right now. Who are you? Ruslan Kogan, founder and CEO of Kogan.com.au and I'm a bit of a serial entrepreneur with 20 businesses up my sleeve since the age of 10 and the latest one, Kogan, makes technology more affordable for people around the world. You're a big deal in Australia. Here in the United States, we, we don't even know who well, you are. But yeah, we, we you're, haven't, like, you're like yeah. Michael Dell. <laughs> you know? we, we, haven't, we haven't launched in Australia yet, but we did buy the Kogan.com domain for a number with lots of zeros on it a few months ago. So our launch here is imminent, but we do have a huge operation in Australia and in the toughest consumer electronics market in the world in the UK. There's Kogan.co.uk and we've launched there as well. Yeah, and you sell uh, all sorts of things from TVs to what, refrigerators or what? Yeah, yeah, so the simplest way to explain it to an American is we're like Vizio but with an Amazon business model. So we manufacture LCD TVs, LED TVs, Blu-ray players, laptops, tablets, all of that sort of stuff and go with a direct business model to the end consumer online. And it's all about driving as much efficiency as possible through the business model to create the best prices and make the technology more affordable for as many people as we can. So as well as having our own brand, Kogan, we also then sell some of the world's biggest brands as well and implement those same efficiencies with those brands like Apple, Nikon, Canon, and all of that sort of stuff. So even if you go into Kogan, you can buy an Apple iPad for cheaper than you guys can here in America on Amazon. So um, it's all about driving efficiency and making technology more affordable for as many people as we can. Now, I used to work retail, so I, I sort of understand what, what you do. Um, what are you seeing happen in the, in the market right now? What are the things that you're noticing? Well, one of the biggest trends is that technology is becoming a commodity people don't care where they buy it from, they just want the best possible price. Yep. They're walking into stores knowing what they want. They're saying, I want this model number, I want that. And so it's coming down to price and who, else, who can deliver it for, for the best prices. In the, our major products being TVs, we're seeing a lot of convergence. So people want internet connectivity, people want smart TVs, people want to interact with the same people that they're interacting with on their laptop, on their desktop, on their tablet, on their TV. So that's gonna be a huge trend. And people talking about TV shows live on their screen as they happen and interacting with um, TV shows and accessing what they want, when they want, on-demand content. I, since I, I, I talked with the Vizio folks, what are you understanding uh, about the impact of 3D? Is, is, it a, is it really that big an impact yet or, or is it still in the future? Yeah, look, when 3D first came out, I was one of the people publicly speaking against it. Well, not so much against it, but saying, hey guys, what's all this fuss about? It's not that great. There's very limited content available. People watch TV as a social thing. You know, you don't want to be sitting there with your partner wearing these goggles. Um, and, you know, th there's just not that much good stuff out there. But the, the biggest thing that hurt me was... Uh, I was saying, well, these big companies, they're hyping it up like this awesome, unbelievable technology. The panel is identical. It was one slight software tweak and an IR receiver. So when that happened, Kogan launched the 3D TV, said, look, we'll give you guys the choice. There's only 50 bucks difference. It's the exact same TV. It's 50 bucks for an IR receiver if you guys want to have 3D TV. And it hasn't been that popular. People, you know, unless you can get really awesome content and lots of it, it's, it's never going to go anywhere. Internet TV is much more exciting than 3D TV. I totally agree. I, I'm using my tablets with the internet TV and pushing that over to my big screen. Yep. Um, tell me a little bit about the technology that you are using to make an e-commerce store. Because that, that's one th difference between my consumer electronics store in the 1980s. I didn't have a website yep. or a database or cloud servers or anything like that. Well, th that's, what, that's what sets it all apart. So. For us, it's, you know, like I said before, it all comes down to price with consumer electronics now. So we've got to drive every efficiency we can. 
It starts with even things like we use Google search statistics to know what products to stock, how many of them, when to order them, to track demand of certain products. Um, we don't create demand like the big brands, that's expensive stuff, but for instance in late 2008 we saw the Google Insights search for netbook just skyrocket and we're like, people want netbooks. So we went out and made one for under 500 bucks, first one for under 500 bucks in the world at that time. And it was built for using people by our customers in social media. They were debating against each other what they want in the netbook. So implementing that efficiency, we're not risking anything in terms of um, are we building the right product, are we not, because our customers are building it and we're seeing the demand. So that's just one thing. The way in which we run our infrastructure and outsourcing anything that's not core to our business is also very important to us as well. So um, giving us that scalability, scalability in our business. Um, and that's what we're tracking on our shows. We're tracking how to outsource your business. like. We, oh. We've interviewed all sorts of different companies like uh, about Echo to do chat rooms, right? And you don't want to write that or, or Jan Rain does, uh, does uh, uh, user management, you know, so your users can sign in your website with Facebook. Why do you want to code that? Why, why reinvent the wheel exactly? Yeah. So um, all, all, of that, all of that's very important. Where we, anything that's been done already, we're happy to use other people that are absolute experts at doing it. But then there's the core things within the business and the creating the supply chain and the sourcing of the products and the production of the products. That's the, that's the stuff that's core to us. And um, yeah, the, the, results, the results have been, have been very good. And you know, you've got to do things differently to everyone else. If you're doing it the same as everyone else, then you just have the same result. But you know, it's, it's worked out quite well. Like Google Insights, I said, is a great tool for tracking what people are demanding, how much of it and things like that. But even if you look through to the way that we recruit, when someone applies with an ad hotmail email account, you know, they don't even get an interview. Yep. Um, if you've got your own domain or a Gmail account, you do, like adding that element of efficiency in the recruitment process. We're a fully paperless office, not because we want to be like, oh, we're all happy about the environment. We care about the environment, that's awesome. But we're a fully paperless office because we need to implement that efficiency in order to make the products cheaper. All our user manuals are online, things like that. And that's how we're able to, for a company that's much smaller than Amazon, still be able to sell an iPad cheaper than Amazon. Um, at CES, we saw all sorts of trends. Ultrabooks, for instance, what's happening there? And is it important to pay attention to? Yeah, no, nah, Ultrabooks, uh, it's interesting because you've sort of got the, you know, will people walk around with a tablet and a laptop? I personally don't even use a tablet. Whenever I'm even on the go, I need the full power of a laptop to be able to do everything I want to do and all the multitasking and copying and pasting between various apps. Um, but yeah, it, it'll be very interesting. I don't know. I don't know if there's a future for the small, tiny laptops because then you're sort of saying, well, why get that and why not go a, why not go a laptop? But um, at Kogan, we, we sell them and they've been very popular. We actually, we were the first company in the world to release a Chromium OS laptop. We beat Samsung and Acer to it and for a better price than they did anyway. And look, the success has been okay, but you can't compare the success of that to, for instance, our Android tablets or to the iPads. Yep. Um, it's a whole different league at the moment. So tablets are so popular, I don't know if there's really a space for, for the Ultrabooks. What's happening in tablets? Uh, you, know, you have an Android tablet? We do. Do you so have two of them, a 10-inch uh, and a 7-inch? We've, we've got three. We've got a 7-inch, an 8-inch, and a 10-inch. Okay. And so what, what are the trends there? What do you think people are going for? Yeah, so with tablets where um, there's either the iPad or people want the Android one, obviously. Um, and they probably want a low cost, because there's Android tablets, like the, I saw the Toshiba that's $500, it competes with the iPad here. Um, yeah. And then it's like, well, why would I want an Android tablet that's at the same price as the iPad? Why not just buy the iPad? But at the, the, at the yeah. lower price ranges, I think it's going to be more successful. Oh, that's where we came into it. So we were yeah. speaking to customers in our blog and our, in the forums and stuff, and we were saying, well, what do you want to see from us? And they were saying, we want to buy a tablet, but we don't want to feel guilty. We don't want to feel guilty for spending eight or $900 or giving it to our kid and then they drop it and things like that. So that's when Kogan launched the world's first tablet for under 200 bucks. And we're seeing a lot of that. People want their Android tablet to be as cheap as possible. The great thing that Android has done for us is it's significantly reduced the cost of manufacturing a tablet. Because for us, it's 
you just care about the hardware, the software's all sorted out. Yep. Now Android's even taken it one step further with Android 4.0 with the soft keys and said, you guys don't even have to worry about where you place the buttons. We've got the buttons all sorted out for you. All you guys really need is a screen and a battery. Yep. You know, and that's going to do a lot of great things to, to the Android tablet market as well. But yeah, the iPad is still very popular. Apple is just brilliant at creating an awesome user experience. And uh, it's going to be a tough job for Android to catch up, but they're heading in the right direction. I, I think so too. Um, appliances, uh, you know, we don't think about, uh, you know, at, at Rackspace, or we don't think about refrigerators or washing machines or anything like that. What are you, are you seeing any yeah. trends or changes there? Um, well, we've actually, we've gone in, into an, a range of appliances purely because our customers were like saying, well, you guys do these TVs awesomely and you do Blu-ray players. We want other stuff as well. So we've got like coffee machines, microwaves, uh, vacuum cleaners, all of that stuff that we deliver with the direct business model too. But um, yeah, I haven't seen too much cool stuff going on there where, you know, if your washing machine can remind you on your phone saying, hey mate, you haven't done the washing in three days, it's about time. You know, things like that. So there's there's definitely space. I know LG did a lot of concept stuff around that yeah. with the refrigerator and the... I saw a couple that would tweet your uh, your, your Twitter account if uh, your your dryer was done, you know, and hey, okay, you okay, take mate. your clothes out. <laughs> That's pretty cool, yeah. I don't know. But, <laughs> but it's like, yeah, you know, is it a gimmick or is it actually useful technology yeah. in terms of... You know, for us, the useful technology these days is put a browser in front of people, get them onto Google, because we love having people who have access to information. And, um, you know, like even in our company, part of our efficiency is at Kogan, when a new employee comes along, we tell them there's absolutely no training courses because training courses are for people who want to look like they're learning. Yep. Google is for people who actually want to learn. There's nothing you can't Google these days. There's no problem you can't solve, things like that. So that's why tablets are awesome. They're, they're making that possible for a lot more people. And yeah. How many people do you have working for you? We've got 50 in our headquarters in Melbourne. But uh, if you look at how much we outsource on a daily basis, there's hundreds of thousands of people engaged with our brand because all of our courier, logistics, that sort of stuff that's not core to the business is all outsourced. Yeah. Um, what else is going on that, that you that you think we should pay attention to this year? Um, well, yeah, I think it's it's all surrounding TV and connectivity to the internet. Yeah, there was but a I lot of smart TVs, connected yeah. TVs. I, I don't believe in them. I like the tablet yeah. for all my social, my discovery, and my uh, and my viewing. And then I want to push it to my TV. I, the exactly. TV should be for viewing. You know? Exactly. And the, we saw a lot of gimmicky stuff with the hand gestures and the yeah. voice. I don't know if that'll really take off. Like, well, know, Xbox I, Connect has that, right? I, you know, I, I don't know. I, yeah. In terms of remote controls, we're going to see a lot more control from our phone. So every TV is going to have um, apps and remote controls that you can easily control from your phone. In terms of like the space that we're in, we're gonna, we've already started seeing a lot of consumer electronics retail move online, but it's gonna be more and more and more. Because like I said, everyone's looking at technology these days as a commodity. They know the product, they know the model number. No one needs to see it in store anymore. They go onto YouTube, they can see so many reviews. No one cares anymore what a salesman in a store says about a product. They want to see what an independent reviewer said about them. And they're reading the blogs, they're watching the YouTube clips and all of that. So that's great for consumer electronics because inevitably it'll make the price drop. Uh, one, cameras, the small cameras are, are sort of going away because cell phones now do such a good job. I mean, I, the new Nokia phones had, what, eight, eight or 12 megapixel cameras, cameras in them, and yeah. they do, I, I shot video on my iPhone, it's great, right? Are, are you noticing the same We're trend? noticing that. Digital SLR cameras are becoming more and more popular for people who want the real, you know, that are real quality. photographers and want the high quality photos and want to experiment around with their photos. In terms of taking happy snaps on the go and just, you know, a, f a camera to carry around on your holiday, that's almost disappearing. People are now more than happy with their 10 megapixels on their phone and even uploading it straight onto their Google Plus or onto their Facebook and things like that. So it's definitely disappearing. The last trend I saw was all these new healthcare devices, these scales that tweet, your, you know, or, or at least uh, keep on the cloud your, your weight so you can see a graph. And 
Um, you know, we had the Jawbone Ups and the Motorola had a whole bunch of devices for runners and stuff like that. Okay. There's all these wearing wearable devices that measure your health care and, and help you track that, right? Are you seeing the same thing? Or are yeah, I'm not too involved in that space, but I do use the Snap Run Keeper. So yeah. whenever I go for a jog and that nicely stores all my runs so I know when I'm getting better or worse. But I guess for other people, you, they wouldn't really want to tweet each time they step on the scales. I think so, a few people might be yeah. intimidated by that. But um, yeah, look, the but that I love pressure. having, you, you still, you want to have all your info in the cloud. So once people learn to control their privacy settings and keep it to themselves, like one thing that I do constantly with all my photos, like I don't care if I lose a laptop or if a laptop gets stolen, but I do care if I lose photos or information. So all my data, all my files, all my everything is always stored in the cloud. And the more we can do that, the better it is. Like I said before, part of the Kogan efficiency is a fully paperless office. If our office burns down tomorrow, we're ready to go from any internet cafe. And that should be with any data collection that happens in our lives, store it in the cloud because it's, it's safer there. What, what's up with Kogan? Are you going to grow into other markets other than just UK and Australia? Are you going to come yeah. and go after Jeff Bezos in, uh, in America? Or? Yeah, look, so we're <laughs> <laughs> Je Jeff's doing a very good job here, but uh, our internal philosophy is there is always a better way. So no matter how well Jeff's doing, there's always efficiency improvements to be had. And we're already ahead of that. At Kogan, we can sell something for cheaper than Amazon can sell it, and we are selling it for cheaper than Amazon. There's definitely space for us in the uh, US market. We decided after Australia to launch in the UK because it is the toughest consumer electronics market in the world. We said our approach to business is go hard or go home. Let's prove ourselves in the absolute hardest place there is, and once we prove ourselves there, then we'll keep expanding. We bought Kogan.com for a number of lots of zeros on it recently. Um, we didn't do that to waste money. We've got very ambitious growth plans, so uh, you might see us in the US very soon. Very cool. Well, thanks so much for uh, meeting up with me oh, and cheers. coming. Thank you so much. Cheers, great to chat to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.